Santiago, welcome to the Smart Water Show. Thank you very much, Marisa. It's a pleasure to be here. Well, let's, let's dive right into it. There are many sure. facilities today that pre-COVID-19 were right in the middle of a AMI deployment or they're trying to start one up. Yeah. I understand you and your team are, are managing a number of projects that sort of were affected by COVID-19. Yes, yeah, we definitely are. We are managing around 22 projects currently. And uh, yeah, we've really had to redevelop the way that we manage our projects and the way we're supporting our customers and our utilities amidst the COVID-19 pandemic for sure. Can you tell our viewers about maybe one of the projects you're currently managing and kind of how COVID-19 has affected your normal project management and installation processes? Yeah, of course, I would love to. So one of our uh, largest projects that our PMO team is running is actually located in Columbia, South Carolina. Okay. And for those not familiar with Columbia, it's a service territory of about 300 square miles and, in, and it has about 150,000 water metering services in okay. the service area. You know, we started the project uh, pre-pandemic in April of last year. And during, you know, from that time on until about March of this year when really the pandemic took, uh, took hold, we were averaging right around 5,000 meter, meter and endpoint installations per month. And uh, you know, we currently have about 65 installers working on the project in different, uh, different areas. So okay. from the warehouse to the field, things like that. In taking a look at our existing procedures, our processes, and how do we rebuild them? How do we improve them? And right. taking a very holistic approach from the ground up. Exactly. We started with training our, our field staff. Okay. So we've really developed and deployed an entire brand new COVID-19 safety plan for all of our, our employees to actually utilize, not just from the warehouse and the operations team, project management, but all the way through all of our installers and field supervisors that are conducting the installations on a day-to-day -day basis. Well, that must've been a challenge to really, you know, rethink <laughs> all of that, you know, parts of your operation. How did things, ch you know, change day-to-day -day for the, the installation crews themselves? A couple of areas that we had to consider and that really came up a lot and, and helped us really pinpoint where we needed to focus flexibility for our workforce, as well as, you know, special considerations that we might need to take uh, for a specific employee on any given day. And what I mean by that is that, you know, we, we've had to really open up our schedule to allow our employees to have a flexible working schedule. Right. You know, so we've, we've deployed our workforces in shift schedules. We've actually added Saturday appointments to allow workers that are missing a day during the week uh, due to family restrictions. Right. You know, they got sick or, or there might be something going on that they just need to, you know, have a day off and, you know, they are not able to come in on a specific day. Right. We put them to work on a Saturday and we're building up crews on that sixth working day of the week to still make sure that we're able to meet our production goals and at that actually exceed them. Um, <laughs> right. In August, we've actually hit a record installation month of about 7,400 installations. Wow. Wow. That's fantastic. It's, that it's fantastic. been, it's been wonderful for sure. And, you know, and we're not able to just do that, you know, alone or by ourselves, you know, so we've actually really relied on our human resources department for their support. And we've also tapped into our own project management experience as far as how do we manage our resources. You know, those have really been two key areas. Okay. And focusing on everything from that, like we talked about, the flexibility for our workers, you know, be it childcare needs, someone is sick, or, right. you, you know, the biggest um, endeavor that we've taken on has been, you know, quarantine resource management, we've called okay. it. Okay. And, and with what that. What do you mean by that? any employee that's coming into our project, into our project bubble, we call it. Yes. They're subject to a 14 day quarantine. So okay. that everybody's safe that's on site. What did you do with the crews to sort of reinforce that social distancing aspect to what they do? We had to be really very creative in, in how we rethought things and how we you know, implemented our new procedures to ensure we're not just focusing on purely efficiencies and more installations, but also understanding the human nature of things. Right. So one of the areas we shifted has been our tailgate talks. You know, we would have a tailgate talk in the morning. We'd have a tailgate talk at the close of the business day. 
you right. know, the way we're managing those currently is we're actually having subset of our installers and having micro or mini tailgate talks. We'll have okay. 12 installers and we'll do either a video call or, or set up a text messaging chain. Still allow our installation team to have that touch point to our project management team, right. field supervisor, and you know, just giving them a heads up. Here's what we're looking at today as far as production goals. Here's what you might face in this area. You know, we might need to be looking at more box installations, right. rock flows, things like that. Also in supplement to that, as far as our communication changes with our field workforce, right. also implemented that within our warehouse itself. Should an employee need to enter the warehouse, we do have sanitation stations throughout and we okay. do require both social distancing and the proper use of PPE while inside the warehouse. Okay. You know, pre-COVID-19, our, our employees would be in and out of the warehouse, you know, loading meters, you know, using the facilities, getting their tools, you know, things right. like that. So what we're actually doing now is we are actually loading our vehicles outside of the warehouse. So our okay. employers will actually drive around the warehouse, yes. set up right outside the gates, they'll let us know they're there, and we actually have check-in and check-out sheets for our inventory. We're loading up their vehicles, they're signing off on it, and then Interesting. They're away. they don't have to get out of their truck, they don't have yes. to get out of their vehicle, so it really allows us for a safe point there to be able to still accomplish the, you know, providing the product for the installations for that day. Okay. Interesting. What about what about changes to some of the, the 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 tools that they need on the job itself? Yeah, I'm glad you asked. So, you know, with the tools itself, what we call it is our installation toolkit for our employees. Okay. And so we actually are looking to provide all of our employees with a bottle of hand sanitizer and masks that they can okay. use on a daily basis. So whether it's to sanitize their hands, sanitize their tools, and then of course while they're out and about on the job and as well as coming into interaction at the work when they're dropping off their products, they're able to have that, their masks on and making right. sure that they're keeping themselves protected. Okay, okay. You know, we talked about the crews. What about the end customers? Have you seen any res different response from the end customer due to COVID-19? But we did prepare for that. And the way we did want to prepare for that is that we work closely with the city of Columbia and the city of Columbia was actually able to provide us a, a letter directly on city letterhead that says that our workers are essential workers. Right. And so that's really been a powerful tool, not just to keep our employees feeling safe and feeling secure about being able to conduct their jobs on a day-to-day -day basis, but also right. when we do have the intermittent connection with a resident, you know, we can provide them that letter as well. Now you guys have done some extremely creative things to keep projects rolling forward. Now, Columbia, if I understand, you said is a, is a pit set project. How Correct. would things be different if it was an indoor set? A couple of the key areas that we've looked at on indoor installation projects is getting ahead of it as much as possible. And what I okay. mean by that is that we want to have as many as communication points to the customer prior to that installation appointment taking place. Right. And we've done things such as including billing inserts, and we're also notifying them of our COVID-19 safety plan that we have specifically created for that project. And then a couple other areas as far as, you know, beyond the communication point is that we are ensuring that our workers are sanitizing their tools and wearing the proper PPE equipment Smart. prior Smart. to entering a property. Of course, social distancing with the resident. And they're also, when they're inside the resident's property, they're working within their own area. Yep. They leave that property. They re-sanitize their tools one more time. Okay. And on to the next appointment. Okay. Well, I'm sure those things take a little added time, but that's what needs to be done in these, in these uh, kind of interesting times that we're in right now. Definitely. Santi, this has been extremely informative. We just want to thank you on behalf of the Smart Water Show for, for educating our viewers, you know, on how to keep these projects rolling during COVID-19. This has been very insightful. Thank you for being here. Of course. It was my pleasure, Maurice. I thank you very much.